G'day guys, welcome back. My name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show. This is going to be a little bit of a different review from what I normally do, which is Super Rugby content. This is going to be the Champions Cup semi-finals. Uh, mostly I tuned into this game to watch the Harlequins. I know Toulouse has been absolutely on fire and Anton Dupont's doing double shifts in his sevens team and the clubs in the Champions Cup. But uh, I mainly tuned into this game to watch the Harlequins because it seems like Every time I watch the Harlequins, they have been pulling out miracles after miracles. I watched Harlequins a couple weeks ago against Bordeaux, where they just completely pulled that one out of the bag with a one-point win. And then I watched the Harlequins playing the Northampton Saints. Uh, another just incredible win over the table toppers in the English Premiership. So I thought I'd tune into this game to see if I can see my, you know, see if I can see, you know, see another miracle in the, you know, in the making. And maybe watch my long lost distance half cousin Marcus Smith do some do some incredible things. But hey, did not happen. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed towards the end because I was, you know, the Harlequins had a really good comeback in the second half. They were down quite a bit, thirty one points to twelve at half time, and came out absolutely on fire in the second half. And towards the end, I almost felt like maybe it was looking like it was going to be out of hope. And there was about three minutes left, and there was a penalty for the Harlequins around the halfway point. Marcus Smith is looking for a quick tap and, <laughs> oh my God, Joe Marla decided to slap, um, I think he slapped Ramos on the back of the head. It wasn't really like a you know malicious slap. It was kind of like, you know, bad luck, like slap on the head just to annoy the opposition. And the referee saw this, Andrew Brace from Ireland, was just like, yep, yeah, that's unsportsmanlike conduct. No need for that in, in professional games. And reverse the penalty. I was very, very disappointed <laughs> when I saw that. Because that just completely killed the game. They, you know, the, the Harlequins, if they scored from that penalty with a more, which was looking a lot better in the second half, uh, they could potentially still have like, you know, like a minute left or something to, you know, to make that like a final attempt for a bit of a miracle win haymaker win at the end of the game but that was completely ruined by joe mala I, I don't know what's going on with him man like every time i watch him play he always feels like to me that he is not taking the game seriously <laughs> i don't know if it's just me or i feel like that's the kind of vibe i'm getting whenever i watch him and see him on the field like he's messing around a bit he's joking around a little bit um let me know if that's what you're getting as well because i, I, I thought i was just really unprofessional from joe mala uh, with that aside, let's talk about my long-lost distance cousin, half-cousin, uh, Marcus Smith. Uh, I thought he well, his attack looked really good. I like the fact that he's always looking for options. Such a go-getter, lots of energy. I do think that he defensively might need to a bit of a work. Uh, but uh, then again, you know, the, there's a thing that the All Blacks did with Richie Muonga uh, a, a while ago now when they felt like he was a bit too small to go up against, you know, big centers big forwards running into the 10 channel. So they, they used to actually hide him a little bit. They used to put him on the wing in defense. They they shift him out. So I thought maybe there's something that they could do with Marcus Smith a little bit, just to, just to you know, have him defend a little bit out wide um, to avoid some of those uh, big forwards running. I think they probably already, yeah, maybe he already does move, play a little bit wider in defense. But um, yeah, there was like one try, I think, in the second half. Uh, he misread the defense, letting a try. But uh, hey, shit happens. Still young guy, plenty of time to improve on that as well. Uh, this game was very exciting. I thought speed versus speed. Anton Dupont scored two tries in this game. I think two tries in this game. And you can clearly tell he's been playing sevens because both tries were just him like chasing down a, a, a breakaway from his own teammates and then pick and go immediately yielded a try. Something that's kind of like drilled into you when you play sevens, keeping the ball alive, never have a rock, never have a breakdown. Uh, keep, you know, just... Keep, you know, keep the form moving at all costs. That's the mentality. And Anton Dupont really bought that, you know, really showed that in this game that has been playing a lot of sevens and a lot less kicking out of Dupont. There was a lot less of that, I guess, uh, I guess like the Rugby World Cup style we saw. The, I guess the the one that really showed was against, I guess, France. He did a lot of uh, playmaking with his boot. I thought uh, there was a lot... Less of that out of 
Dupont this game, there was more of a peak and go from him. Again, it's probably from his sevens coaching he's been receiving recently. And also, Romain Intermac is on the field. So a lot of that playmaking has been kind of shifted to him as well. And Dupont uh, was more, uh, you know, what was less of a, 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 had had that playmaker work taken away from him a little bit as well. Another player I thought will play extremely well. I'm a really big fan of this guy. And that is uh, Movalka, the, the hooker. I think his first name is Petal Movolka. He plays for the French national team. He is just unbelievably good. I think he's probably encroaching that, you know, top spot, challenging Malcolm Marks for that top hooker spot. Uh, he plays like loose forward, extremely agile, extremely mobile around the field, and just, yeah, incredible. Like being able to make good offloads as well, and just so much energy, so much power out of him. And he's a hooker. So just double tick in that, in that you know, utility box and uh, incredible p- performer uh, for him. Uh, the Harlequins, I thought the number 15 was really good. Green, uh, just, I, he looked like a forward to me. Like he looks like he should be playing uh, maybe like a hooker or like, or maybe a, um, a loose forward, but he's, he's a fullback and he was just, again, really, you know, you know really able to sniff out opportunities and follow up with the, some of those line, line breaks. And uh, he was, there was one try in the second half where, he was the one that kind of like started it all and made a break, offloaded, and then got back on his feet to get a quick up, um, pass off the ground from his halfback and scoring a try. So he, he literally ran like 60 meters in this whole sequence, making two runs to score a try for the Harlequins. Really, really impressive from there as well. The Harlequins set piece, I thought the scrums were even for both teams. Uh, the lineouts, uh, to my surprise, actually, I thought, the, I thought, I thought you know, with the, with the test, level props that was on the field for Toulouse. I thought they might have been more dominant, but quite even. The line was pretty poor for the Harlequins in the first half. Uh, outside of that, I thought Danny Kerr at times looked a really slow. There was like a, a try that was scored because of a really sloppy pass from Danny Kerr, uh, like just a freebie. I thought that should not have happened. Look, really, yeah, really wasn't ideal there. So outside of that, yeah, I thought it was entertaining game, really fast paced, lots of speed out there on the field from both teams. Liner, uh, Esther Hazen from the Harlequins, you know, um, Ramos came over the bench. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Intermac was on the field with Dupont, just, uh, and then they have Kinghorn, a fullback, just uh, just stacked with absolute will. And then, yeah, they got the Argentinian test uh, wingers, what's his name? Malia on the wing, just absolutely stacked with talents on both teams. A very, very exciting game uh, that we win is. So let's have a look at some of the match stats of the game. Six tries to, f- to four, uh, hundred conversion four to three. I think this was, uh, yeah, not great for the both team. 67 for the Toulouse. And then did I say too long? I think I think too long a few times this video review to lose, um, 75% for Harlequins. The attack, Actually, more run meters from Harlequins, especially in the second half. 517 overall and 416 for um, Toulouse. To Nine clean break for the Toulouse. Seven for the Harlequins. Yet 23 defenders beat. And this is what I'm talking about. Always looking for that option for the Harlequins team. 14 for Toulouse. And no offloads. I think this should be... A, this, this, this can't be right. This definitely more... I definitely remember there were offloads out there. I don't Maybe someone wasn't keeping track of the stats. Um, and then territory, 50% for the Harkins, 48 for Toulouse. I think second half, really, Toulouse was struggling quite a bit. Tackles made 138 for Toulouse, 75 for Harkins. Again, really low in the tackle count. You, you, you really felt like there was more tackles made in the game like this. 75 overall, wow. It's 84% completion rate and 60, 86 for Toulouse. When it comes to set piece, nine lineouts for Toulouse, 100%. Harkins, 80% lineout success rate. Uh, out of 12 lineouts, one. There was seven scrums for Toulouse, two for, for Harlequins, 100% success rate for both. Kicking, kicking from hands, 19 from Toulouse, 15 from Harlequins, nothing too crazy out of either teams. 647 kick meters though. Um, that is really beating the Harlequins 542 quite a bit there. When it comes to the breakdowns, there isn't too much. There was 13 turnovers, one. In rocks or moors from the Toulouse, I think that was probably the big difference in the really made the difference in the first half. Is especially the Harlequins was yeah really struggling both the lineouts and the breakdowns. That was a key area that they really 
wasn't um, wasn't what was was really our gun to be in the first half. And outside of that, it was quite quite even for both teams. Discipline: twelve penalties considered for Toulouse, a for Harlequins. There was one yellow card for a high shot on Anton Dupont in a clean out. It wasn't a flush hit. It didn't look like um, Dupont kind of like like kind of like moved himself up a little bit like this. So it wasn't really a clean shot. Kind of like did hit it, hit him, clipped him a bit in the in the chin. Um, I think yellow card was sufficient. It wasn't wasn't quite severe enough for a red there. So yeah, let's just quickly go through some of the tries that's been um, scored. Let's see, what do we, let's see, what do we see the tries? No, no. Can we see where the tries are? Anyway, I guess we'll just, um, it's a preview. Is this going to tell us? No, it doesn't. Anyway, um, this, Man, this website sucks. <laughs> Honestly, why doesn't it tell me how many tries, who scored the tries? Oh my goodness, this is terrible. This is actually terrible. Live commentary, is this what we're gonna see? The Okay, let's go key events. Let's just do that, load more. Okay, okay, here it is. Score summary. This is what I was looking for. So yes, um, this game kind of started uh, with a quick try to to lose three minutes into the game. The Harlequins was pinned inside the own twenty two with a defensive lineout. The lineout was stolen from the uh, Toulousians, and the ball kind of just popped out center field. There was a crash ball for Mierfau, who looked like he was going to get held off for a more. Managed to get hand free. Ball popped out. For Intermac, and he ripped a big one cutter over the top to the winger. Uh, Matthias Lebel went in for the try. Five points to nil already. Three minutes on the board. Um, the Harlequins managed to get themselves on the board. Is this right? I thought there was a... Yeah, Harlequins managed to get themselves on the board. 13 minutes later, there was a line out from the Harlequins. They kind of like crashed themselves into the blind side a little bit. And then that didn't work. The ball went back center field. There was a big crashing run from Don Brandt. And then eventually the ball went out. Marcus Smith was down the blind side. He wrapped himself back in an open side. A little bit of dummy and go. Cuts himself through center field. Try time for Harlequins. Got themselves ahead. Seven points to five. 18 minutes into the game. 17 minutes, I guess, officially. Uh, there was a penalty to, to lose. There was a, a line out. They went for a more. The more wasn't going anywhere. Uh, there was a penalty advantage. The, then they went for another more, and this more was dragged down over the try line. Uh, Movaka went over the try. Could have been a penalty try, I think, this because uh, it, it was it was literally like pulled down very blatantly uh, uh, on the try line. But luckily, the try was scored, so the referees are like, yep, fair enough. Try no penalty try, no yellow cards. Twelve points to seven. Some referees would give out the yellow cards anyway in that situation because it's uh, still a cynical play pulling them all down, and. You know, the trial was scored. The referee sort of let that go there. 24 minutes into the game, there was a pretty weird sort of play. It looked like there was a 50-22 that was kicked by Harlequins and the the the, um, the the kicker was outside of 50 maybe, or maybe just like on the fifth meter line. So the, the fans were like really unhappy. Uh, and then the Harlequins wasn't, wasn't you know, the, the, the wasn't, you know, losing any, you know, wasn't phased by that. Quick line out throw. Um, the went for the more, and then the more was just literally like running forward. It was just that quickly. The Toulousians was not ready for this, just running through. And then um, Will Evans went in for the try for Harlequins. Twenty six minutes into the game, like literally right from the kickoff from this from this more try of the Harlequins, uh, there was a, a, a breakdown for Esther Hazen, and then Danny Kerr just got the ball and really. Um, uncaringly, I guess, pardon me, the pun, threw the ball to like a, a lock or standing right next to him. I think the lock was probably expect, like it wasn't lock, I think it was number six, the forward, was maybe expecting him to box kick this. So he wasn't, the ball was just like, he wasn't ready and it was a really poor pass. The ball just got knocked on. Uh, and Tabal Flamont was right there pressuring this 
for this pass and then just scooped it up, ran down a free try for Toulouse, 17 points for 12. 32 minutes into the game, another terrible line out for the Harlequins. It was overthrown. Uh, Toulouse just counter-attacked, kicked down the field, nice and chased. Kinghorn was tackled short on the try line. Anton Dupont showing how showing that he's been playing a lot of sevens. Right there on the spot, scooped that ball immediately, try time. Uh, there was a, you know, they, they look at King Kong for a potential knock-on. There was no knock-on, but it looked like King Kong was actually in front of the kick. So he was offside when he was chasing this ball. So that was missed by the referee. But regardless, the try was given. 24 points to the 12. 36 minutes of the game just before halftime. There was a, um, again, there was a breakdown turnover. Like the breakdown has been terrible for the Harlequins, in the first, especially in the first half. And the Toulouse to just, you know, um, just some really nice running, some good offload. Got into the Harlequins 22. Pick and go, pick and go. And then eventually Movaka, pick and go, got really close to trial line. And once again, just like the try he scored before, Dupont was right there, ready to go. Scooped out the ball immediately as Movaka went to the ground. Dunk the ball in for the try. 31 points to a half time. Second half, Harlequins came out with much better attitude. A lot of pressure. Five minutes into the second half, there was a penalty. They went for the line out. They went for the more. There was a nice little um, like inside play in the center field where Andre Esterhazen crashed through. But eventually, the ball came out. A long cutout pass from, from Marcus Smith, way out wide to Caden Murley. Uh, goes into the corner, jumping in the corner, nice dunk, 31 points, 19, the Harlequins back themselves on the board, 52 minutes into the game, this is what I was talking about, there was some really like, there was a bit of a kicking game going on, and then Tyrone Green, counter attack from inside his half, uh, you know, was managed, what was, you know, he, he kind of got through a few defenders, and it was managed, when, when it was getting wrapped up, he managed, got the offload, and his teammate ran down a bit more, and it was tackled inside like the, the Toulouse 22, uh, Tyrone, Tyrone Green, got back on his feet and just bowled him down the field. And as the ball came out of the rock, he was the first guy there to to receive the ball from his halfback. Just a little pop to him, and he just punched straight through the defense, who was still trying to get back in 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 in, in, in uh, yeah, was still like completely out of shape. And then he punched himself through for the try. It was really well done. Uh, Thirty one points to twenty six. Uh, Toulouse was looking a bit snoozing. Six, seven minutes into the game, there was a dangerous clean-out from the number two from the Harlequins. If we can get the name. Yeah, Jack Walker was sent off or uh, hitting Anton Dupont. 67 minutes, there was, a uh, again, the Toulouse finally got themselves back together a little bit uh, with a player advantage, which especially was a four missing. They went for the more, they went for the penalty, went for the more. Uh, the ball was actually stopped by the Harlequins. Uh, it doesn't matter. The Toulouse got the ball out. Nice little loop play behind behind the back. Ball gets sent out wide. Uh, Juan Cruz Malia. I'm pretty sure that's his, that's his full name. Is that his full name from the Argentinians? Yeah, Juan Cruz and Malia ran down the sideline, bumped into liner. Uh, kind of like tripped over just before try line, essentially, from bumping over liner. Dumped himself over. Wiggled himself over, I guess, for the try. 36 points to 26. And then finally, 78 minutes, clock's running out. You feel like maybe the Harlequins get themselves one last miracle haymaker, got a penalty, and then Joe Marla slaps the uh, uh, Ramos on the back of the head. Turnover, and then that was pretty much the end of the game. So yeah, let me know your thoughts about this game, guys. Really entertaining, really interesting to watch. I think I will be tuning in to watch the final uh, that's coming up between Toulouse and... Uh, what's his name? Leinster. I did watch Leinster play the other, so they play Northampton Saints yesterday. Uh, in front of like the record eighty something thousand crowd in Ireland, and uh, yeah, that was that was interesting. I thought Leinster really fell asleep a bit in the second half, and it wasn't like what was it? The the um, James Lowe scored like three tries, was looking way too easy, and then suddenly Leinster kind of just like. Went into court autopilot and almost let the Saints get back and almost had them, like, you know, potentially stealing the game uh, despite the overwhelming dominance from Leinster. So we'll have to see if Leinster's going to come out playing like that again against uh, Toulouse. But I think Toulouse will be the favorites going into the final uh, against 
Leinster. But uh, yeah, it will be a great match to watch. And uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, see you guys later. If you want some merch, check out the merch store. You can get something like this for yourself. And uh, have a good one. See you guys next week. Cheers.